Hello and welcome to Lessons with Lefevre. Today our objective is I can convert metric units of mass. Metric units of mass are known as milligrams, grams, and kilograms. For example, six kilograms is equivalent to 6,000 grams. Now let's dig deeper into today's lesson. Anytime we're making conversions, whether customary or metric, we need to know when it's appropriate to multiply and when it's appropriate to divide. But I know what you're thinking, how do I know when to multiply or divide? Great question. Anytime we're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we have to multiply. Now let's say we have 14 grams and we wanted to convert that into milligrams. The first thing I need to know is that a gram is larger than a milligram, so I'm going from a large unit to a small unit, which means I'm going to be multiplying. The next thing I need to know is that in one gram, there are 1,000 milligrams. So 14 times 1,000 equals 14,000 milligrams. Now on the flip side, anytime I'm going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, I need to divide. If I have 8,000 grams and I'm converting those grams into kilograms, the first thing I need to know is that a gram is smaller than a kilogram. So that tells me I need to divide. But how do I know what number to divide by? Well, here's what you need to know. 1,000 grams is equivalent to one kilogram. So 8,000 divided by 1,000 equals eight kilograms. Converting metric units of mass. Kilograms, grams, milligrams. Here's what we need to know about these. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So that tells us that 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. And then one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. So 1,000 milligrams will be equal to one gram. As we complete these next four problems, I want you to keep two things in mind, and I bet you can almost guess what they are. Hmm. Yep, when we're going from a large unit to a small unit, you multiply, and when you're going from a small unit to a large unit, you divide. Number one, eight hundredths of a gram of a kilogram is equal to how many grams? Since I'm going from kilograms to grams, a large unit to a small unit, that tells me that I need to multiply. Now, with metric units, we work with powers of 10, which makes things a little bit easier. So we're multiplying times 1,000. Now, the first thing I like to tell my students to do is annex those three zeros that they see at the end of the 1,000, because 1,000 is actually equivalent to 10 to the third power. Now that exponent in the third power tells us about those three zeros. So I'm going to just copy the same number, 800, but add three zeros at the end of it. The value of the number did not change. I just added zeros, but those are actually equivalent decimals. Now, I need to move that decimal three times to the right because when I multiply, my number should increase. So I move the decimal one time and it goes from eight hundredths to eight tenths. If I move it again, it goes from eight tenths to eight holes or eight. And then if I move it for a third time, it goes from eight to 80. Now those additional zeros before the 80 and after the 80, I don't need because they don't change the value of the number. So my answer would just be 80. So 8 hundredth of a gram is equivalent to 80 grams. Number two, seven and one tenth grams equals how many milligrams? Now I need to know that a, a gram is larger than a milligram. So again, I'm multiplying times 100. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, I don't like decimals. 
but I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you. So just like number one, we're going to annex the three zeros from the 1,000 onto our decimal seven and 110. Now remember, those are equivalent decimals because I did not move the decimal. The, the amount of zeros that you put after a number doesn't change the value. So now we're going to move our decimal three times. So we have seven and one tenth. We move our decimal, it becomes 71. Move it again, it becomes 710. And the, for the third time, it becomes 7,100 and zero tenths. We don't need the zero after the decimal point because it doesn't change the value. So that would just give us 7,100. Seven and one tip grams is equivalent to 7,100 milligrams. Number three, 2,560 milligrams is equivalent to how many grams? Here I'm going from a smaller unit to a large unit, so I divide. And I'm dividing by 1,000 because there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. Now, I like to do a little trick when I have numbers that are powers of 10. Anytime the two numbers you're working with, in this case, our dividend and our divisor, and then the number zero, we can cancel out the amount of zeros that are in each number. Now, I only have one zero in 2,560. So I can only cross out one zero in 1,000. So that would mean that this problem changes from 2,560 divided by 1,000 to 256 divided by 100. Now what I'm going to do is write 256 and then place that imaginary decimal at the end of the whole number. Since I'm dividing, I actually have to move my decimal to the left. To the left, to the left. Since I'm dividing by 100 and 100 equals 10 to the second power, think about it this way. 100 has two zeros, so I move my decimal not one time, but two times, which would give me two and 56 hundredths of a gram. Number four, 920,000 grams equals how many kilograms? Since I'm going from small to large, I divide by 1,000. And look at all those lovely zeros. Perfect opportunity to cancel them out. I can cancel out three zeros from each number, from my divisor and my dividend. That leaves me with 920 divided by one, which is simply 920 kilograms. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. Have a good day, and thank you for watching Lessons with La Fever.